Hello friends, this is Homer Knox of MenTeachingMen.com. In this video, we're going to be talking on the subject of the prophet Elijah. The New American Standard and King James Version Bibles will be used for a scripture translation in this video. Hello friends, this is Homer Knox of MenTeachingMen.com. In this video, we're going to be teaching on Elijah, the Tishbite, a man, a man of action. Praise God. Elijah, who the heck was this guy and why are we studying him? Elijah came on the scene like a power-packed tornado. Bang! He's the most mentioned Old Testament prophet in the New Testament 29 times. Miracles after miracles, some of which have never been done again. Bang! Eliza's challenge to the heathen gods and idol worshipers is bold and direct. We know nothing about his background, his family, his education, but we do know that he was a person that heard God's voice and obeyed. How wonderful, how wonderful. And that's what we all want to be obedient servants. Certainly encouraging if we don't have big time spiritual family or exceptional education. Just like Elijah, we can just listen and obey. Praise God. Who is Elijah the Tishbite? And where is this guy from? Elijah, or Elias, which is Greek, means my God is Jehovah, or whose God is Jehovah. The meaning of the name Elijah is my God is Jehovah, or whose God is Jehovah. He's a settler of Gilead in Israel. He lived on the earth from approximately 900 B.C. to 849 B.C., approximately 51 years. Smith's Bible Dictionary calls Elijah the grandest and most romantic character that Israel ever produced. Bang! Smith's Bible Dictionary calls Elijah the grandest and most romantic character that Israel ever produced. Wicked King Ahab was ruling Samaria in northern Israel, and the country was in great idolatry when Elijah began his ministry. We have a record of how Elijah looked. His chief characteristic was his hair, long and thick, hanging down his back. Probably wouldn't go over very well today. His ordinary clothing consisted of a girdle of skin around his loins, which he tightened when he was about to move quickly. And sometimes he wore a mantle or cape of sheepskin. He was a shaggy guy living in a shaggy part of Israel. Eliza spoke, but left no written record except a letter to Jehoram, king of Israel in 2 Chronicles 21, verses 12 to 15. Elijah proclaims Jehovah's vengeance against Israel. 2 Kings 17.1 Now Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the settlers of Gilead, said to King Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, before whom I stand, surely there shall be neither dew nor rain these years, except by my word. Bang! Well, this is really big time, isn't it? Ahab and the rest went away laughing, or they were in shock. About three or four months of drought, Ahab started to believe Elijah's word. Wow. Staying alive, staying alive. The brook of safety and sustainability. God directs Elijah to take off for his life. 1 Kings 17, 3-4. Go away from here and turn eastward, and hide yourself by the brook Cherith, which is east of the Jordan. It shall be that you will drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to provide for you there. Well, that's wild, isn't it? Brook water and room service. This is the first of three times that Elijah is fed by divine intervention. 1 Kings 17.7 it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there was no rain in the land. The result of this prophecy, 
also affected Elijah, possibly disheartening for Elijah as the brook dried up. Sometimes we think that we can escape all the punishments that are coming to this world and to America for their sins. Unfortunately, even though sinless, we will have to suffer in many things with the sinner, as was the case with the Israelis in Egypt under Pharaoh and with Elijah at the brook. 1 Kings 17, 8-24, Widow of Zarephath. 1 Kings 17, 9. God is speaking to Elijah. Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and stay there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. Elijah goes to Zarephath. This is the second of three times that he is fed by divine intervention. He meets a widow and he asks her for water and a cake. Remember that there is a drought, no food, no water. Elijah again asks her and gives God's promise for her obedience. The promise is there will be enough flour and oil until God sends rain again. The widow obeys and then God provides provision for her family according to God's promise. Just a ton of commands from God in the Bible with rewards for our obedience. How wonderful of God. He asks us to obey and then he tells us what he's going to do if we do obey. How wonderful. The widow's son falls ill. 1 Kings 1.17 Now it came about after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, became sick. And his sickness was so severe that there was no breath left in him. Even when things are going well, there will be trials and tribulations for all of us. We are not yet in our heavenly home, and our life in this earth, things happen. 1 Kings 17, 19-22 He said to her, Give me your son. Then he took him from her bosom and carried him up to the upper room where he was living and laid him on his own bed. Verse 20, he called to the Lord and said, O Lord my God, have you also brought calamity to the widow with whom I am staying by causing her son to die? Verse 21, then he stretched himself upon the child three times and called to the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray you, let this child's life return to him. Verse 22, the Lord heard the voice of Elijah and the life of the child returned to him, and he revived. Stretched himself upon the child three times. There were two other men of God that stretched themselves upon a dead person and prayed for healing, and they were healed. Two other examples in Scripture. 2 Kings 4.34, Elisha, dead child of the Shugamite. Acts 20.10, the Apostle Paul, Eutychus. Aren't we glad, aren't we excited, thankful that God answers prayer? I tell my wife that when I'm sick, take me to church so that I can be prayed for, I can be anointed, God will heal. I can also be healed at home as this child was. Elijah prayed for this child three times. Sometimes our prayers aren't answered without a spiritual fight. Fighting, besieging, crying out to God for help. Luke 11, 9-10. Jesus is talking. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. 1 Kings 18, 1-46. Jehovah's victory on Mount Carmel. A fiery battle. We are now in the third year of the severe famine. Things are bad. We have approached one of the most familiar and powerful stories in the Bible. Do you think that other areas than Samaria and Israel suffered from this drought? I would assume the entire earth suffered, as scriptures say, on the face of the earth. It's the same with sin. If I sin, it would affect me and others around me. 
there are an entire sphere of persons in my life, it would affect. The effects of sin are not limited just to the sinners, but many others. Well, here's the problem. How does Elijah show himself as Ahab wants to kill him? God provides Obadiah, an officer of Ahab, to help with the meeting. 1 Kings 18.3 Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. Even in a heathen environment, God has a people, men and women that love God even in an uncomfortable situation. Obadiah had taken a hundred prophets and hid them by fifties in a cave and provided them with bread and water to prevent Ahab's wife Jezebel from killing them. Brothers and sisters, you can keep yourself spotless even in an ungodly situation if you want to. Might be difficult, but you can do it. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 5. Then King Ahab said to Obadiah, Go through the land to all the springs of water and to the valleys. Perhaps we will find grass and keep the horses and mules alive. Verse 7. Now as Obadiah was on the way, behold, Elijah met him, and he recognized him and fell on his face and said, Is this you, Elijah, my master? Verse 8, And he said to him, It is I, go, say to your master, Behold, Elijah is here. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. Verse 17, When Ahab saw Elijah, Ahab said to him, Is this you, you troubler of Israel? Verse 18, He, Elijah, said, I have not troubled Israel. But you and your father's house have, because you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and you have followed the Baals. Troubler of Israel. This term is used for another person in Scripture. 1 Chronicles 2.7 The son of Carmi was Achor, the troubler of Israel, who violated the ban concerning Jericho. Fire from Heaven 1 Kings 18.19 Now then send and gather to me all Israel at Mount Carmel, together with 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of the Asherah, who eat at Jezebel's table. Elijah proposes that sacrifices should be publicly offered for the purpose of determining whether Baal or Jehovah was the true God. God or Jehovah on Mount Carmel. Easy outcome on this one, isn't it? 1 Kings 18, 20-21 So Ahab sent a messenger among the sons of Israel and brought the prophets together at Mount Carmel. Elijah came near to all the people and said, How long will you hesitate between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. Here's the big question in all of our lives. Who are you going to serve? You can't serve two gods, Jesus or your flesh, Jesus or the enemy. You can't serve two. Make up your mind. As Joshua said, as for me and my household, we're going to serve the Lord. Elijah is going to give the people an example of God's power and God's love, since God is not going to destroy all these people just the worshippers, priests of Baal. 1 Kings 18.23 Now let them give us two oxen, and let them choose one oxen for themselves, and cut it up, and place it on the wood. But put no fire under it, and I will prepare the other ox, and lay it on the wood, and I will not put a fire under it. 1 Kings 18.24 Then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God who answers by fire, he is God. And all the people said, that is a good idea. This isn't the first time that fire from heaven is mentioned in the scriptures, and it won't be the last. Our God is all-powerful and can do anything. Genesis 19.24 Then the Lord rained on Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone, and fire from the Lord out of heaven.
Interesting how he uses from fire from heaven to demonstrate his power. Thank you, Jesus. 1 Kings 18.26 Then they took the ox which was given them, and they prepared it, and called on the name of Baal from morning until noon, saying, O Baal, answer us. But there was no voice, and no one answered. You have to feel somewhat sorry for the many idol worshipers even today, crying out to their God, depending on their God. No voice, no one answered. 1 Kings 19.27 It came about at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Call out with a loud voice, for he is a God. Either he is occupied or gone aside, or is on a journey, or perhaps he is asleep and needs to be awakened. Our boy Elijah is having some fun now, isn't he? Interesting. Ministry can be rewarding, and it also can certainly be fun. 1 Kings 18, 28-29 So they cried with a loud voice and cut themselves according to their custom with swords and lances until the blood gushed out of them. Verse 29 But there was no voice, no one answered, and no one paid attention. Showdown Time with God 1 Kings 18.30 Then Elijah said to all the people, Come near to me. So all the people came near to him. 1 Kings 18.32-33 So with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench around the altar, large enough to hold two measures of seed. Then he arranged the wood and cut the ox in pieces and laid it on the wood. And he said, Fill four pitchers of water and pour it on the burnt offering and on the wood. Four pitchers of water? Hey, there's a drought here. Eliza asked this be done four times. Wow. 1 Kings 18, 36-37 Elijah's Prayer At the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet came near and said, O Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Today let it be known that you are God in Israel, and that I am your servant, and I have done all these things at your word. Verse 37. Answer me, O Lord, answer me, that this people may know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you have turned their heart back again. Look how short a prayer by Elijah with miraculous results, that this people may know. Eliza says, I know. Now I desire that they know. When we become a Christian, we should know that we have been saved by the blood of Jesus. Our sins are forgiven. At some point, we should know that the Holy Spirit indwells us. We should know that God desires us to know him, and God desires all people to know him. 1 Kings 18.38 Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. 1 Kings 19.39 When all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Just wonderful to see God's work. Just wonderful to feel or see the moving of the Holy Spirit. God is good. Being in God's presence is absolutely refreshing. The confrontation on Mount Carmel was designed by God to show that drought was not merely an unfortunate incident or accident of nature, but Jehovah as the one and only true God. 1 Kings 18.40 Then Elijah said to them, Seize the prophets of Baal. Do not let one of them escape. So they seized them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. This is all hard stuff, all 450 dead. Thank goodness for the redeeming power of Jesus Christ, or we would all likewise perish. One would have thought that this would have ended the worship of the false god Baal. Nope. Nope. The name Baal appears in the Bible almost to the end of the Old Testament. Elijah, 
Olympic runner. First Kings 1841-42 Now Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat and drink, for there is the sound of the roar of a heavy shower. So Ahab went up to eat and drink. After the death of his prophets, we don't see Ahab upset or Ahab threatening, Ahab distraught. Very interesting. 1 Kings 18, 42-44 But Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he crouched down on the earth and put his face between his knees. He said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. Verses 43-44 to 44. So he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go back seven times. It came about at the seventh time that he said, Behold, a cloud as small as a man's hand is coming up from the sea. Prayer is interesting. We see God send fire from heaven with one short prayer. We see God sending rain on the earth after praying several times. Sometimes answered prayer takes work. It takes effort. Are you and I willing and able to take the time, the work involved, to receive answers to our prayers. I hope you are, and I hope I am. 1 Kings 18, 44-46 And he, Elijah, said, Go up, say to Ahab, Prepare your chariot and go down, so that the heavy shower does not stop you. In a little while the sky grew black with clouds and wind, and there was a heavy shower, and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. Verse 46, Then the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he gritted up his loins and outran Ahab to Jezreel. My, oh my, Elijah outruns a chariot of horses the 24 miles distance. With the hand of the Lord upon us, we can do anything. Nothing is impossible. Are you ministering? Be prepared for an attack from the enemy. 1 Kings 19, 1-2 Now Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me, and even more, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow, about this time. Jezebel, psychotic Jezebel, she is such a horrible creature that no one names their little daughter Jezebel. Yuck. At the discipleship house where I teach, I always get concerned if one of the men starts to minister, as the enemy will attack them. It's amazing how guys will come off living in the streets, get saved, grow in the Lord, and then start ministering. Many of these brothers have great ability for God. 1 Kings 19.3 And he, Elijah, was afraid and arose and ran for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. Elijah is afraid and runs for his life. What? How can that be? Scared and depressed. Isn't this the guy that just defeated the prophets of Baal? 1 Kings 19.4 but he himself, Elijah, went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die. Well, brothers and sisters, we can be critical on this, but when we are under great pressure, we can get confused. We might not be able to think correctly. This is the third of three times God feeds Elijah by divine intervention. That's pretty interesting. Mount Horeb. 1 Kings 19.8 And he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mountain of God. Mount Horeb is another name for Mount Sinai, where God met Moses. Elijah is the only person listed in the scriptures to go back to Sinai. God's presence was on Mount Horeb. 1 Kings 19.9 Then he came there to a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. 
And he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? Can't be good that God is asking him, What's he doing here? It can't be. 1 Kings 19.10 He said, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the sons of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I alone am left, and they seek my life to take it away. Eliza's answer is a list of his woes. 1 Kings 19, 11-12 So he said, Go forth and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord was passing by. And a great and strong wind was rendering the mountains and breaking in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire a sound of a gentle blowing. First Kings 19.13 When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. And behold, a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? First Kings 19.14 Then he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the sons of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I alone am left, and they seek my life to take it away. Then there is a still, small voice, a gentle whisper. The New Revised Standard Version says it was the sound of sheer silence. It was God loving on Elijah and revealing himself to Elijah. It's certainly an emotional time for Elijah. When it is over, God leaves his peace with Elijah. Elijah is then appointed by God to announce a change of leadership in nations and his ministry. 1 Kings 19, 15 to 16. The Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel, king over Aram, which is Syria, Jehu, king over Israel, Elisha, as prophet in your place. Interesting that we have a change of the nation's leader. And in his ministry, after Elijah questions his work in ministry and of God's power. 1 Kings 19, 18. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Our wonderful and all-powerful God will always preserve a remnant of his followers. 2 Kings 19.31 for out of Jerusalem will go forth a remnant, and out of Mount Zion survivors. The zeal of the Lord will perform this. We are now going to see Elisha as he is with Elijah daily, ministering to and being discipled by Elijah. 1 Kings 19.19 19. So he, Elijah, departed from there and found Elisha, and Elijah passed over to him and threw his mantle on him. Passing the mantle means to assume a role of leadership that someone else once held. Nabus Vineyard Ahab desires Nabus Vineyard, and he and his wife Jezebel devise a plot to kill him and take possession of his vineyard. After the dirty deed is done, God sends Elijah to condemn Ahab and Jezebel. 1 Kings 21, 17-18 Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, who is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, where he has gone down to take possession of it. After his encounter with God on Mount Horeb, any fearfulness or timidness Elijah might have had has passed 
Through God's instruction, Elijah gives a fearful denunciation of Ahab and his wife Jezebel. The prophecy is so horrible against Ahab and his wife that Ahab repents and humbles himself. That's what we want for everybody, isn't it? We want them to humble themselves before our great God. 1 Kings 21, 27-29 It came about when Ahab heard these words, that he tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and fasted. And he lay in sackcloth and went about despondently. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Do you see how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Because he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring the evil in his days, but I will bring the evil upon his house in his son's days. We again see another wonderful scripture showing God's great compassion. The Bible is just packed with scriptures of his goodness. Psalm 103, 8. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. Chariot of Fire, Elijah taken to heaven in a whirlwind. Elijah goes across the Jordan to Gilgad, which is the home of the school of the prophets. Time for Elijah to say goodbye. Wonderful to be able to say goodbye before we leave our temporary earthly home. I love this. They are going along talking. 2 Kings 2.1 And it came about when the Lord was about to take up Elijah by a whirlwind to heaven, that Elijah went with Elisha, from Gilgal. Elijah prays for Elisha on his departure. 2 Kings 2 verses 9 and 11. Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. Verse 11. As they were going along and talking. Elijah is leaving shortly. Elisha knows this. So what were they talking about? I don't think they were talking about the weather. My guess is they were talking about how good Jehovah God is. How good. They were talking about the continued ministry of Elisha. Elijah was encouraging Elisha. Be strong. Fear not. Elijah was sharing of God's faithfulness in his life. When my father-in-law was at the end of his life, my wife flew to Florida to see him and ask him to pray for her. How wonderful to ask blessings from others before one goes to glory. Didn't Christ do that for his disciples at the end? Luke 24, 50-51 And he, Jesus, lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. 2 Kings 2.11 Behold! there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, which separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind to heaven. Gone. Poof. Elijah didn't die. He left living. And he's still living today in glory. As Elijah left, his mantle fell on Elisha. How wonderful. How wonderful. Matthew 17, verses 2 to 3. Mount of Transfiguration. And he, Jesus, was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his garments became as white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. James 5, 17-18. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the earth for three years and six months. Then he prayed again, and the sky poured rain, and the earth produced its fruit. I just love that nature like ours. Same concerns, same problems, same desires. He was just like us. And most people in the Bible are just like us with the same things we have going. Possibly that Elijah will be returning to earth as one of the two witnesses mentioned in the book of Revelation. Revelation 11.3 And I will grant authority to my two witnesses, 
and they will prophesy for 1260 days, clothed in sackcloth. Malachi 4.5, last Old Testament book of the Bible. Behold, I'm going to send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. Elijah is named 29 times in the New Testament. First is connection with John the Baptist. The second is at the Transfiguration. The third is at Jesus' crucifixion. The fourth is Jesus compared with Elijah. The fifth, Elijah miracles limited in who they assisted. The sixth, Elijah with a nature like ours. And the seventh, Elijah pleading with God against Israel. In conclusions, what can we say about Elijah? Well, let's look at his miracles, his interactions with others. Review of Elijah's miracles and interactions. Number one, he divinely was fed three times. Number two, he was a fearless reformer. Number three, he rebuked kings. Number four, he was mighty, mighty in power. Number five, he was once, he was discouraged. Number six, he was not infallible in judgments. Number seven, he was divinely honored. And number eight, he was a miracle worker. Finally, Elijah had a great love for God and great love for his people. And great pastors have these qualities too, a great love for God and a great love for the sheep. Elijah, one of a kind, one of a kind prophet in the Bible. Bang! Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's been a blessing to you and you've learned. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the Men Teaching Men YouTube channel. Hello friends, this is Homer Knox again. I hope you enjoyed this video teaching. The question I have for you is, are you born again? Do you know Jesus as your personal Savior? If not, why not? Why not? Jesus was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. He suffered and died under Pontius Pilate and the Romans. He was buried and he rose from the dead on the third day. He's now ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. There is salvation in no one else, no one else. And so if this has stirred your heart and you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, please pray with me. Dear Jesus, please come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sins, all my sins by your precious blood. I accept you as my personal Savior. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for cleansing me. Thank you for my home in heaven. Thank you for giving me the Holy Spirit and making me a new creature. Amen and amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer from your heart, you're now born again, you're a Christian. Welcome. Welcome to the family. If you prayed this prayer after slipping away, you're now part of the family. You're back in the fold. Welcome. Congratulations. There's another teaching on the menteachingmen.com website entitled, I Just Got Saved. And that video will help you with your new walk in Jesus Christ. God bless you. God bless you. Amen.